Hey, Russ. Yeah, Marty? You think, you wonder ever if you're a bad man? No, I don't wonder, Marty. I'm a cisgender white male. I know I'm a bad man. After the completely organic critical success of season four, we figured why not revisit season one? Yeah, we really felt that Rust and Marty shouldn't be fighting crime because what is crime in these modern times? They should also fight systemic oppression. It's the most evil thing I've ever seen in my life. Not me. You know, the most evil thing I've ever seen is, what's that? Caucasian skin. Have you ever read the book White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo? Unfortunately, no, but I respect your spirit. I'll loan you my copy. It's on my anti-racist reading list. Much obliged. Be sure to give that back to me. White people have a habit of taking stuff that's not theirs, never returning it. Stolen land. Yeah. Man, I feel good about myself. Me too. You should. Well, we're battling systemic oppression. We actually force everybody on set to read this book at least twice. Oh, it's great, a real page turner. We even give out pop quizzes on set and if they can't tell us what happened, they're fired. Let's see more. Let's do it. You seem kind of strange, like you might be dangerous. Of course I'm dangerous. I'm the police. I selectively enforce laws that disproportionately affect marginalized communities, therefore perpetuating institutionalized racism. Oh. Okay. Remember the riveting monologues and poetic dialogue of season one? Well, we figured this time around we would do away with all the subtext and just lecture the audience outright. I think human consciousness is a tragic misstep in evolution. I think if we were gonna do the right thing, we would stop procreating, cease farming cattle, we would deny our programming, stop using fossil fuels, and walk hand in hand as brother and sister into extinction. That sounds wonderful, Russ. Would you mind telling my kids at dinner? How old are they? Seven and four. Well then, it will be my pleasure. What should I bring? They're toddlers. A storybook with hardcore gay sex, of course. You got it. Much obliged. Can I dress as a drag queen when I read to them? That was a given. It's my dinnerware. We have an understanding. We were really painted into a corner by the fact that both of our leads were not just law enforcement. I know, it's, it's difficult. They were also cis-hetero males. But it was a blessing in disguise because it gave us the opportunity to bring in a girl boss of color that could emasculate and embarrass both of them at every turn. You limp pansies. Your lack of melanin disgusts me, you pasty you look like the fucking Pillsbury Doughboys. I mean, she, she, she's right. Hang on. Clapping triggers me. Can you all do spared fingers? As compelling as the first season was, it didn't have any of the digressions into gender that modern audiences are expecting. So, we changed that. Joe, 
This is a pain. It's simple. But to me, it's a vagina. It's wherever the damn hell it wants to be. You are absolutely correct. I don't need you to tell me that. Sure, it's fascinating to watch a mystery unfold in front of you, but why not just tell them exactly how to think? They're not watching. We're just yip-yapping into their subconscious, telling them exactly what we want them to think. Are we on? No. There's a video type too. this type. You might argue that we have no right to reproduce the first season. Speaking of reproductive rights, <laughs> Somebody pick it up. Somebody white. Children can be very hard on a birth in person. Kids tend to get up very early and affect your sleep. If you get the opportunity, you should kill your baby. you. She's getting rid of it. You know, I love abortion. Mm. I've paid for many, and if I was pregnant, I would get one myself. That's powerful. I know. I it? support it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I can't wait to have a vagina. Is that how it works? One thing is for sure. Men can get pregnant, which means men can get abortions. That's why I'll be doing both this Christmas. Uh, Kwanzaa. That's what I meant. The technology that we're bringing into this season is truly amazing. AI does most of the scenes for us. We don't even have to write them or shoot them. AI just generates them on the fly. We don't even have to recast the actors. I mean, have you seen some of the stuff AI can do? It's really a miracle. I mean, have you seen the pictures of Oscar the Grouch eating Taylor Swift's ass? I mean, it's breathtaking. The best part is all the stories have already been written. We just have to rework the characters to be avatars for our own opinions. Oh, check this out. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, good. And I hope it pisses off the fans. Yeah, me too, dude. Oh, man, that's Sizzler. That's a word I'm creating. I hope it catches on. Oh, it won't. I know. It never does. You know, there's only 12 rules for life. What's that? Peterson? How can you expect to change the world if you can't even clean your room? Shut the f up! Drop it! Morning! Well over half the welders under. Uh. I, I gotta go clean my room. So enjoy the modern retelling of True Detective Season 1. We hope you all tune in. And please follow our social medias. I'm at White Fragile Producer. And I'm at DP Payne 69. Tom is a flat circle. Every show that's ever come out is just going to be made again and again. This time it'll be Woker. 
My pronouns are he, him. It's not trash. A PA will get it. Put it in the recycling so it doesn't kill a dolphin or one of those things. Unless people don't like dolphins now, then put it in recycling. is going on air right now oh look who it is oh it's my favorite big booty white guy on, get out Alex of here. Stein. Get where'd you get out of here. hey where'd you get that get suit men's Pick warehouse men's weird house weird house you beta male look at this beta male look at this freaking beta male dude right wow oh, what are you doing right now? <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and ahoy. Welcome back to Normal World. I'm Dave Landau. Uh, unfortunately, Quarter Black could not be here tonight. Bit of a family emergency. We uh, Thoughts and prayers is what you would say. I hope yes. everything goes well there. Sitting in for him tonight, he'll be at Porky's Comedy Club in St. Cloud, Florida this weekend. Uh, also, you can see him at the Froenthal Center in Muskegon, Michigan, with me April 5th and April 6th, the Village Theater in Canton, Michigan. Please welcome Derek Richards. Thanks for having me. Hey. How are you? Yes. Yeah. And as always, please welcome Angela. Hi, Angela. Hi. And back <laughs> fresh from crashing the Alex Stein show. This uh, coming week at February 22nd, you can see him at the Vulcan Gas Company in Austin, Texas. March 26th in Gainesville, Florida, right? Yep. Yep. At, at the Florida, high, Florida time. Florida time. At the high dive, uh, March 27th in St. Augustine in Cafe 11, and March 28th uh, in Tampa at Side Splitters, which is a club I absolutely love. Love it. Please welcome Brent Pella. What's going on, y'all? What's going on? Thank you. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Dave. I appreciate you, man. Dude, I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah. We shot a sketch today that's going to come out we soon. Did. Yeah, it was a good time. Yep. I appreciate it a lot. still hurt, but we'll get over it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's it's part of it. Yeah, it is part of it. That's not just a thing. My no, nipples no. do hurt normally, but yeah. that's a different conversation. But yeah, well, mine, mine chafe. <laughs> we did buy you lunch, though. You mm. did. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of it. It's in his rider. Nipples <laughs> hurt. <laughs> buy me fruit Equals salad. chicken salad. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. chicken salad. <laughs> Uh, and me and myself, you can see me this weekend at the Comedy Works in Saratoga Falls, New York, as well as check out my special at Comedy Genius, comedy, uh, G-E-N-I dot U-S, and you can use code uh, 20 per, uh, no, you can use code Dave Landau for 50% off. What? 50%? 50%? <sighs> That's a steal. That's damn near half. Who gets half <laughs> off, Dave? <laughs> uh, so it's good to be here. Which half? <laughs> And I just got back. I was out last week. I was in Vegas. Yes, you were. At Garrett's Comedy Club, which is one of the best clubs in the country. Phenomenal. And uh, we have pictures, I think. that's Oh, that's me and Brad. I'm on the right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, I, uh, and this is Frank Mir, who came out to one of the shows. And his fist is as big as my face. <laughs> and he broke Silvio's arm in three places. Whoa. Look yeah. at his forearm. Dude, this dude is uh, huge. Like, He's a UFC god, just a legend, and he came out to the show, Damn. and uh, him and his wife were lovely, but his wife was uh, a little chatty, and I'm like, why is nobody going to this table? And I started making <laughs> fun of them, and I realized, oh, that's why. Yeah, if somebody went to that table, they wouldn't come back from that table. Right, and then yeah. Frank's going like, no, I told her to stop. You go at it. I don't care. Tell her. <laughs> And I'm like, this is, I go, you look huge, sir. And then yeah. partway in, there's guys in the crowd wearing like, you know, tap out shirts who are like, oh my God. So like, it's fun when after the show, people want to take pictures with the audience member instead of the comic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're at the merch booth and the guy just has a line out the yeah, door. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> well, I'm just talking to this guy who likes my comedy, but they're like, excuse me, uh, can I just get a quick picture? Hey, Dave me? Landau, right? Oh, yeah. awesome. Hey, would you mind taking a picture of us? <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you do one a little higher? I can't. <laughs> Very short. Oh, just okay. Just stand on all your t-shirts. Yeah. 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 
Okay. But you're not selling. Yeah, exactly. yeah stand on the yeah, shirts, shirts you're not selling. Here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he was in the front row, wasn't he? No, he was He was tw- uh, towards the back. Okay. I think he prefers to sit in the back. Right. Because he doesn't want to draw attention. But it's hard to not draw attention when... Uh, you're the size of a Cadillac Escalade. Yes. And when, your wife yeah. is talking constantly. <laughs> yeah. When <you're, laughs> yeah, when you basically have the head of an Easter Island. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was so cool, though. We ended up talking for like a half an hour after. He's like one of the cool. coolest guys I've talked to. And it's like their daughter is into uh, also into fighting. So they show me a picture because now she's going to become a champion. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, that's a girl you don't have to worry about dating. Mm-hmm. It's just a trained killer yeah. in her house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really nice guy. But yeah, and that was Vegas besides the streaker. Streaker at the Super Bowl. Because, yeah, because you were there right after the Super Bowl came to town. I came in that Monday to see all the San Francisco fans crying. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, yeah. Which felt good. That was they, hardly a streaker, too. Did you it see was, it? Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah. yeah. Was, they it had ha- pants was it half assed? They, they had pants on. Yeah. It was a pants on streaker? Yes. It doesn't count. Well, he took. I agree. <laughs> well, found this out. This guy actually see took. Some dong. <laughs> <laughs> I need my Super Bowl with penis. Yeah, it's like, what's going I'm not on? watching. You think I want to watch a bunch of men tackling each other? No. Which is why no the 49ers dong. fans were crying. That's a, yeah. <laughs> no penis to be seen. But the guy, the streaker, actually took out a $50,000 prop bet that there would be a streaker at the Super Bowl. And he won $374,000. He executed the bet himself. He's a businessman. He's a businessman. If you can do that with pants on... Yeah. And make that bet. I'm going to go do that now. Yeah. yeah. It seems like a career move. To like you, can, you can do that like over and over. I don't know what the rule is on how many times you can show your bare ass before you get locked up. But I'm willing to find out. I am too. I think it's three misdemeanors as a felony, depending on the state. <laughs> okay. But if it's a pants on streaking... Yeah, then it's I, feel, not. <laughs> I, I feel it's not even a crime. It's, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's a crime in off. San Francisco to not do it with not your pants off. Yeah, yeah, right there. To they're keep very the pants a, on. They're like, ah, pants on streaking is definitely yeah. some time in the pokey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're just like everybody else laying in the street in San Francisco. At that <laughs> yeah, point. everybody in San Francisco's got their pants, pants on. Pants no on, shirt. no shirt. Just yeah. laying. I need degree angle. Just laying there in your own urine. Yeah. Yeah. No shoes. This isn't anything. I was happy, and no offense if you're a San Francisco fan, I was just thrilled as a Lions fan to see you lose. Um, it I'm was just you. nice to see, like, halfway in when you were like, oh, right at your moment where you thought you were going to win just like we thought we were going to go to the Super Bowl, and then you <laughs> lost. Yank. Ah, it must have sucked for you. Whoopsie. Oh, well. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I grew up in Northern California, so uh, it's not my team, um, but I felt for my hometown fans. I really just didn't want... Travis Kelsey to get a ring. I why? I'm good on Travis Kelsey content. I'm fulfilled. Do you, you like know? that he's kind of trolling though? I don't think he's smart enough to troll, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's I think he's legit the fight he's Mr. Pfizer guy. I don't think he's pulling a psy up on it. Is it true? Do you think he's legitimately that stupid? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do. I have a friend who plays in the NFL and has told me a couple of stories. I mean, this obviously comes like third party anecdotal, whatever, but I'm just, I'm good on Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift content, you know? Oh no, I'm good on that content. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I just mean when he's getting off the bus and he's dressed like he's about to like perform with ABBA. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think he's trolling, dude. You don't think so? I think that's, I think he's, he's in his rhythm. I think he genuinely looks like he's stopped at one of the shops in Vegas where you can buy a track suit. (laughs) That's like for that. He looks at himself in the mirror and he goes, Yup. And then he just walks right out. Yeah, this is good. The, give this me is one good. Of, it's like the flamingo where you can get the Cosby sweater still, and you're yeah. like, There's no way someone's buying that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he is. He might literally be that guy. He's that guy. Let me buy this douchey outfit to be on the biggest stage imaginable. <laughs> yeah. They're going to take a shot of me walking off the bus dressed like a jackass. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. <laughs> Your friend who plays in the NFL, you said it, this. he knows stories of Travis Kelsey. Yeah, he's just kind of. I don't want to badmouth Travis Kelsey any more than I have, but 
Oh, does his girlfriend have a bunch of fans that might be a little off? Maybe, you know, and I do have tour dates at brentpella.com slash shows. So uh, I'd rather not get delimbed by a bunch of 17-year-old blonde girls. Um, but just it, second-handedly, I've heard that in, uh, you know, ar- in argument conversations gotcha. about bigger topics, he's not right. fully there. Um, but that that's kind of it. Sure. That's it. Also, just not a huge fan of the Pfizer ads. I'm not either. I no. hate that. Yeah. Well, and when he pushed his coach, that was kind of a dick move. So just all in all, not a huge Travis Kelsey fan. No, I'm with you. I, I do agree with you on all of that. Yeah. I, I did not like the Pfizer ad campaigns at all. Yeah. The, the pushing the coach and screaming thing was a bit odd. It's booster rage. Especially because he's a little <laughs> older and he's been... Com- it is booster rage. <laughs> it's booster rage, dude. <laughs> Ever experienced booster rage before? Yeah. It happens around your second or third. COVID yeah. nineteen yeah. booster shot six up rage. To your coach, like, hey, I need more. Yeah. <laughs> I need more what, Travis? Pick pickles? I, it's, yeah, I'm not I sure. He doesn't know. He doesn't even know. Do you want to go in right now? I don't know. I don't know. I feel very old. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm really scared. <laughs> I. <laughs> Our fans are filled with people in the stands who don't belong here. They're young girls. <laughs> who are these women? They don't know the game. <laughs> He's just yelling about the halftime food. Just, <laughs> yeah, you know, just roids mixed. bitching about the food that was in the locker room yeah. at halftime. Yeah. Just roids mixed with boost just makes you an animal. <laughs> Booster rage, dude. <laughs> totally had that. Oh man. Yeah, he's uh yeah, he's a bit much. I I just don't like when anybody's a professional football player either towards the end and they're like, Yeah, probably gonna retire right now. It's like, why cause you're thirty? Right. It's like why don't you why don't you stop? Yeah. <laughs> Like, all right, if you don't want to play, don't play. But stop acting like it's been that that hard on right, you. Right, right. Like, yeah. I understand it's it's got to be tough getting tackled and whatnot. Yeah. But you you made a lot of money. Like, you can't be like, I don't know. I just don't know if I can do it. This Super Bowl banging a pop star. It gets, it gets tired. Was he talking about retiring? He was, was earlier he was? in the year, yeah. Really? Yeah. He's 35, wow. I think. He is. He's a little up there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, around in, the age. In sports years, that is the age of uh, you need to kind of, of check. Of calling it quits. Unless well, especially as a tight end. Yeah, unless yeah. you're Tom Brady. Yeah. Who's apparently going to play until he's 63. Mm-hmm. Or Aaron Rodgers is 40 now. Oh, yeah. Aaron he's did. coming back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I say good, though. Oh, for sure. 40 the new 30. Yep. Makes me feel young. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? No. <laughs> I, don't, I was never good at sports. Did you play sports? I did. I played basketball through college. Did you really? Yeah. Did you yeah. played in college? I did, yeah. But what uh, college? I went to UC Santa Cruz for okay. two years. And that's a D3 school out in California. And then I transferred to UC Santa Barbara, which is D1. And during that transfer summer, I grew two inches and I put on like 10 pounds of muscle. In college? Yeah. Boost? I hit puberty late. I Damn. Yeah, my face hasn't caught up yet. I <laughs> shaved maybe once every two weeks, but... Uh, I broke my ankle going into my junior year, so I did not play at Santa Barbara. But, oh, it's a bummer. Yeah, but that's when I started getting into comedy and film and video work, so it's kind of like a blessing in disguise, yeah. I guess you could say. So were you trying to go, were you trying to hope to go kind of pro? Yeah, so I was walking on. Um, it, the ankle break happened during the tryout. Oh, yeah. dude. Oh, seriously? For, yeah, yeah, for yeah. An NBA tryout? No, no, no. Uh, San, UC Santa Barbara. Oh, oh, okay. D1 tryout, coming from a D3 school. And I definitely wouldn't have been like a starter. I would have been like a 10th, 11th, 12th man type right. of role. But uh, the tryout was great for like an hour. And then we started scrimmaging. And like three plays in, I came down on some dude's ankle. And that was hoop dreams crashed. Oh. But sent me down the path of writing and journalism, got into the school paper and realized I uh, could make a living looking like an idiot instead of on the court. There you go. <laughs> well, so one dream shatters <laughs> and, and another one's birthed. Another one's birthed. Mm-hmm. So hopefully that goes well. I'm really trying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving it my all. You got a special out, don't you? I. It's coming. Where can we find it? March 14th. It's called Conscious Bro. There you go. Conscious Bro. Yeah. March 14th on YouTube. I didn't mean to open a wound. Uh, no, the wound is so scabbed over. Is it now? Yeah, it is. Good. Is yeah, that yeah, mentally yeah. and physically? Yeah, and it's duct taped, you know? <laughs> I poured diesel on it and just really? lit it. You just, you, you just <laughs> put on Cauterized your, it. Go back yeah. to your hotel and pull out your jersey. <laughs> Sleep in it. I'll be on my flight home just <laughs> shaking Why the cage. Holding a ball. <laughs> Why couldn't Dave just shut up? Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm just doing like I had a chance. I had to go there. <laughs> My friend was like that though. He was he was drafted to um, it was probably six or seven different colleges were looking at him. Mm-hmm. And the final game of high school, he got put in uh, football, tackled, and his ankle was spun around, dude. Like Ooh. destroyed his entire. Man. Entire chances of playing football for, and I mean, it was like University of Michigan, Michigan State, like oh, wow. these, were, these were real, you know, as well, like great schools, but it changed the core, his, his path. He wasn't happy he went in. Yeah. I it bet. was one of those, but we, everybody played so dirty then that it was like the other team did it on purpose. You think so? Oh yeah, for sure. When was this? That sucks, dude. 2000? Okay. Or I guess it would be 99. Right. Dude, that's part of the reason I never really played football, because I just couldn't tell what was going on at the bottom of the tackle. Yeah. I, I've you know? told this story before. I got, trying to hurt each other. Yeah. I got tackled once, and then I uh, took off my helmet, threw it, lit a Newport, and walked home. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> I was like, that's this when you were tackled by one of the one of your arrests. Yeah, from the cops. <laughs> oh well, no, no. I, I've been. And you had a football helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a, a type lamp, of helmet. While you were buying drugs, I had a lampshade on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was uh, I was running from a crashed car <laughs> <laughs> with a football helmet, <laughs> smoking a Newport. Yeah, yeah. It was a car that crashed into a short bus. That yeah, yeah. Was getting off of. <laughs> yeah. Hence yeah, the see, helmet. Yeah. I grabbed one of their helmets <laughs> and I ran. Oh man, damn! So, do you still ball though a little bit for fun? I do yeah, yeah. So I uh, I ended up not playing at Santa Barbara, but I got into the school newspaper and stayed involved with sports. And then I coached at Kobe Bryant's basketball camp for five years, which was wow. held at UC Santa Barbara. So that's how I got. Oh, that's cool. Up with that, yeah. Good yeah, for cool. you. Yeah, it was a blast. Yeah. Good. Cool. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. That's dude. That's that's an amazing thing. Yeah, still play. Move a lot slower than I used to. But yeah, my dad coached basketball. Yeah. That was just something that uh, I was not good at, but I loved. Yeah. I loved uh, the Pistons, the Bad Boys, and all Dude, that stuff. Yeah. yeah, back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's a good game. It is. It is. Not the names you call it, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, wow. <laughs> Speaking of True Detective, we we saw earlier. <laughs> when we shot. Did you did you either you watch this? I'm two episodes behind, and okay. I don't know if I'm going to finish after seeing some of the tweets. I accidentally looked at t- the tweets after the uh, season finale. Oh, did you? I did. So you kind of know? I kind of know, and more so than knowing what happened is knowing how people feel about what happened, you know? And there seems to be a lot of disappointment. There is. Yeah. Yeah, There. at least I was. Yeah. Especially when they kept saying time is a flat circle so much that we re-recorded <laughs> the voiceover for <laughs> the sketch. Oh, by the way, spoilers. Uh, but... That's why we recorded the voiceover today for that yeah. sketch, because right when like this meth head just says time is a flat circle, and you're like, <laughs> you're going back to season one without even, dude. It's the laziest writing. Yeah. And Jodie Foster's this amazing actress, and it's just so beneath her. She's a bit fat for my taste. <laughs> <laughs> but it's my own opinion. Uh, but the other one is your type. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes, I like a good. <laughs> Big Eskimo. <laughs> Find me a sturdy Inuit chick. More cheek metal, the yeah. better. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> the whole time I'm just like, what metal, are you, dude. Like, what do you, you think you? she could walk through TSA or she's got to take them out? You pull them both. These are massive, bro. Put them into a dirty bucket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Run it through the x-ray. One's got a piece of banana on it from yeah, the inside. That's what I mean. Like, how do you eat anything? I would be terrified. Wouldn't it be inconvenient? I'd be scared to put on a shirt with yeah. the piercings. Just rip it off. Ah. And you're just like eating corn on the cob and you're like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have that on your face? Yeah. And then uh, she's in scenes with Jodie Foster where Jodie Foster is like threatening her. And it's like, she's not scared of you. <laughs> She's, She's like, not scared of Godzilla. No, she looks like uh, the the Indian dude from Hell or High Water. There's no. <laughs> she's. I'm just saying. She's a. I think she's a fighter. Yeah. Oh, is I'm she? Not mistaken. Yeah. I mean, she's oh, a. She's a tough chick. Looks intimidating. That's why the sex yeah. scenes with her. You're like that guy. That guy. Right. Yeah. The dude who he just is a skinny dude with a beard, mm-hmm. and she's riding him, and you're like, that's sad. <laughs> <laughs> She's the reason Travis Kelsey wants to quit. Yeah, yeah. She could scare him. But when we filmed it, we went to we Angela and I. Uh, Angela played a <laughs> prostitute, 
And uh, Bryce, uh, who works here, decided that he would get a very authentic hotel. I got some pictures. Yeah. So he got an actual no-tell motel down the road. This is one. <laughs> where when we showed up, I'm like, nice. why would you not just get a day's in for $30? Why would you get the $65 cash only where the back door's been beat out? <laughs> That's the microwave with no handle or anything. Oh, whoa. Have cooked oh, man. Drugs in it. Definitely. And oh, that's no a yeah. bath door microwave on for it. sure. Yeah, there's no door. There's <laughs> no, no door. anything. And it was uh, it was really something when you walked in because you could hear moaning. Uh, that is semen everywhere. And I mean, <laughs> oh, everywhere. man. On every. That's why I'm oh sitting on a God, towel dude. in the scene. Oh. Yeah, you'll notice that David's sitting on a towel in yeah. that scene. Just a little. <laughs> I'm not moving the towel. Oh, <laughs> look at this man. one right uh -huh. here. Oh, it's oh a my. street. Oh, yeah, that, look at that God. right there. That looks like it's from oh. a carnival. Like that looks like a party trick. There's different <laughs> densities. It's from seems. different men. <laughs> different densities. Like some different colors. Color more yeah. viscous like than if others. If you killed a hooker in there and a detective went in, they'd be like, uh, "From what I can tell, she was killed by 812 men." <laughs> <laughs> Some with magnesium deficiencies. There's Dave on the top. <laughs> this one was clearly... We're looking for a dehydrated 57-year-old male. <laughs> and a malnourished 19-year-old. There's a... Uh, there was apparently... According to these, there were so many handprints all over the headboard. Yeah, It was unbelievable. Handprints. Just filthy handprints that were never wiped off. God. So you could probably get some clean fingerprints off them, but I doubt that would be your killer. <laughs> They're no longer alive. Oh, <laughs> Yo, there's no way. For yeah, sure. The, yeah, the only way they'd match them to them is, oh, is uh, the mortuary. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those are chopped off hands. <laughs> It's the, it, oh, it was so, dude, it's just. I can't, I can't your guy cry. Give Bryce credit for finding an authentic no-tell motel dump. But even as a comic, there's a lot of places you will walk into, as you know, when you go, well, it's, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And right when you walk in, McClowry was the only one that's like, am I weird that I don't think this is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> he said that? Until he got in the room. And then he was like, wow, that's more semen than I've ever seen. <laughs> In one place, there's not Dude, there's not I a stayed. naval ship with this much. <laughs> you, you've stayed at some pretty bad hotels. I'm Terrible saying, right? bro. motels. Yeah, I absolutely. stayed in a motel. It, it was one of the numbers, like Motel Nine. That's I how think. you know you're gonna have a good the higher night. the numbers, the yeah. worse it gets. It was, I'm pretty sure it was a Motel Nine. It was in Alabama. This was maybe a year ago, and I was just I I had six hours. Before my flight, I wanted to sleep. I didn't want to sleep in the rental car. I thought I'll just lie down on top of the blanket and be good. I walk in. The shower is dripping brown water. The towels are crusty and looks like they just were used in like an oil change, right? And oh. as soon as I walk in and open the door, uh, a ma like it looked like a mouse, but it might have been a squirrel. It had like a big tail. It shot out the door, <laughs> just ran straight out the door. And I, I thought, eh, Probably not going to stay in here. I go to the office and I tell the lady what happened. Uh, this lady looks like she had never left her office chair, right? Like she was born, raised, and still lives in that chair. And I said, yeah, and then a rodent ran out the door. And she looks at me and she goes, oh, yeah, that's a round. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. She said, oh, yeah, that's a round. Do you want a new room? And I said, no, <laughs> I'm okay. I'll take uh, that's a ra I got yeah. that's a round. It's just a round. It's just a thing that you accept. At I the thought she had a nine. name for it. <laughs> no, she's like, probably. oh, that's Gary. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, oh, the rat squirrel. Yeah, rat squirrel. Yeah, yeah there's he's a here. Yeah, they, they don't. They do come in pairs and then triplets. <laughs> yeah. Can do you catch them? Nah. Yeah. She, why would we catch them? Did you find the one under his bed? No. <laughs> <Did> you... <laughs> oh my god, dude. I, yeah, the number of hotels I've stayed in that are just horrific. I, I had had sex with my girlfriend in one hotel, fiance, and then, you know, we were laying there in bed, now, you know, wife, but the door opens, and this guy just goes, sorry, it was in Caseville, oh. Michigan, oh and my. this guy goes, sorry, and walks in, opens up a painting, like, turns the painting and goes, circuit breaker, and then hits the circuit breaker to turn back on the lights, and then just walks out. No way. Oh, my God. <laughs> What? And I was like, well, I guess we're not staying here tonight. <laughs> yeah. Just walks, didn't even didn't even knock and saw us and just said, sorry. That was sorry. the only response, but he was like, still gonna 
walk in. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, you work for me, so you're not human. At least he apologized. It was nice of him to say sorry. You yeah, know, yeah, he had manners. <laughs> yeah, after you two were basking in the afterglow. Yes, the afterglow of of two minutes sex with me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know the hotel you're talking about. Oh yeah, I think you do too. It's yeah, uh-huh. Herschel's on the Bay. Yes, I'll name it. <laughs> It's you know it's it's tough though. R- hotels that are crappy, hard to quit. Have you ever tried to quit a bad habit? I feel like you're climbing Mount Everest in flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's what it says. Sometimes I do. <laughs> yeah, we've been there too. But uh, here's a breath of fresh air: Fume. It's not about giving up; it's about switching up. And Fume takes your habit and simply makes it better, healthier, and a whole lot more enjoyable. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, it uses delicious flavors. So. And I've been seeing you uh, using that Fume several times today. So, yeah, I know you've been using it for bad habits. So, yeah, go to tryfume.com slash normal and give it a whirl today. Mm Mm-hmm. Try Fume.com slash normal and you're going to get the journey pack today. Fume is giving listeners of the show 10% off when you use code normal. So uh, do that. Try Fume.com slash normal. And I do use it. I really like it. It's like a little clicky fidget thing. It's got a nice wooden base. I really like the minty flavor. It I helps it. with my bad habits, which I'm not going to tell you what they are. That's use good. your imagination. People can figure it out. Yeah. They're I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> it's, an, it's an odd thing. <laughs> mine, my bad habits is brought to you by, no. I'm, <laughs> that is That's mine. Leave it alone. You can have it. I, thank you. Drink it. I appreciate it. That's why it's here. I've, it says you have a real problem. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, I don't want to ruin that. Can I ruin the end of the show? Or sure. What? Okay, yeah. yeah, so the true detective, I don't know what happens. Mm. It just sort of ends, and, <laughs> uh, well, it turns out that it's not science fiction. Oh. And uh, what I liked about it was it had that thing element to it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then it turns out it's uh, basically this, okay, it turns out this Eskimo girl, or uh, Inuit, mm-hmm. uh, finds out that they're polluting the area so they can then, the scientists can then make the molecule they're looking for that can cure all diseases easier to get. By adding more pollutants, it'll make everything a little bit more uh, fragile and it'll be easier to get to these molecules. Okay. So she finds that out and decides to throw a hissy fit and destroy all of their work that could cure everything that mankind could be, you know, cancer, everything. Right. So she destroys everything. And uh, one of the guys snaps and starts stabbing her. Mm. Now, in fairness, that's too far. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, her it, smashing everything or him stabbing her? They're both too far. The okay. stabbing was too far. Okay. But her smashing everything's also like, yeah, slow down. So <laughs> they could be charged with something. You don't just start destroying all these years of work that can cure every disease imaginable. So they cover up the murder. So then at the end of the show, Jodie Foster and uh, the fighter girl, Metal Face, go to a (laughs) tiny shack. And then they go inside, and for some reason, there's 30 women that appear in the shack like a clown car. And it turns out that they had kidnapped the scientist, made them undress, and forced them out into the frozen ocean, who then ran out into the ocean, piled on top of each other to stay warm. And that's how they died, because all the Inuit women uh, forced them to their death because one of them had oh. stabbed the So why did all the eh. Inuit women, what, why? It, it was the girl that was killed was an Inuit woman. The, so they, they had like a pack that they were like, yes. get them. So they were, so the way that people say it's woke, yes, all the scientists were white and bad, but all the Inuit women weren't necessarily good mm-hmm. or bad. So it didn't really end in that way either. And then at the end, you're not sure if the one uh, girl's dead uh, the metal face. Okay. And then Jodie Foster's answering all the questions um, to the police the same way that Matthew McConaughey did in the first. Right. Except it's very, very vague the way that no one would answer a question. Like, well, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever happens, happens. And you're like, we'd be <laughs> internal affairs would be very upset with you yeah. right now. So, yeah, it just sort of ends. And after a f- five-episode buildup that was so slow and meandering, 
to have it just jammed into one show mm. made little to no sense. So there you yeah. go. There's your spoiler. Great. You just saved me hours of I, my life. So thank I, you. The thing that you read was right because you just go, why? And I like Jodie Foster. Instead of watching the show, uh, I'm going to try Fume. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to break your bad habit of watching TV that doesn't give you the enjoyment you desire. Have you been watching Night Country? <laughs> I fume. <laughs> You're welcome, fume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just, everything sucks now. <laughs> just sucks. Let's talk about Chipotle. Yeah. Um, Chipotle today, there's a big story. A boycott at Chipotle has been called uh, mainly by conservatives after working um, after a worker was written up for not using proper pronouns. Uh, the worker post explained what happened uh, via a tweet at Chipotle, basically saying what happened was uh, uh, somebody was hired. He was training this person. The person was not using gloves. Long story short, he said, hey, bro, you got to put on gloves. Like, the guy was going to go tr touch something that was sanitary. He said, hey, bro, you got to not, you got to wear gloves, you know, just in that sort of split second. Yeah. As a result of it, uh, the guy was reprimanded uh, t because the person did not identify as bro. They uh, I identified as some shit. Let me look. <laughs> <laughs> something that is not bro. Something they, them. Not yeah. bro. Uh, they, them. Something, yeah. They, them, yeah. Because that's what you're going to... Because when you want to stop somebody in a second from doing something, oh. you want to make sure... You want to make sure the pronouns are correct. Exactly. Right, right, right. right. So here's... Yeah, so I, a 23-year-old college student, have worked at Chipotle for almost a year now, which for someone that age is, is breathtaking. Mm -hmm. And I would say I'm known for being... <laughs> A pretty friendly, I guess, question mark. So they're probably kind of a dick. But I was recently training a new hire, somebody I've never met before in my life, mind you. And as I'm showing them how to set up a line, I say, oh, bro, we never move anything without gloves. And they snap at me and say, my pronouns are they, them. Use them correctly or don't talk to me. As I take a step back and go throughout my day without speaking to the little shit three hours <laughs> into my shift, my, my GM pulls me into the office saying I've been reported by him and the little shit for misgendering harassment and that his hands are tied and I have to receive a full ass write up. This really isn't as professional. Anyway, <laughs> like I'm not tripping, right? Question mark. Should I just quit because WTF and then crying emoji? Dude. I mean, the only pronouns that should matter at Chipotle are white rice or brown rice. It's true. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I prefer, I prefer to say regular or fried. Right. <laughs> I don't like color. If it happened the way that that person said, the way that that person wrote it up, that it was just bro, it was one time, and then the person complained, that's bananas. Well, that's I mean, insanity. if they kept doing it all day long With after the they were to offend, yeah. exactly. But well, you could mess up a couple times, especially if it's the first person you've dealt with in that type of situation. And, and it looks like a dude, one or two like reminders, a dude. and they present masculine, right? You know, but one time it's like, what are we doing? Well, and harassment, harassment's nuts. A write up is insane. Like that's you, crazy. You have to involve harassment to harass somebody. Yeah. Which I don't understand. This is a problem. Like if you <laughs> if you look at somebody's resume and there's 48 different pronouns on there, I just think don't hire them. And I realize people might think that's bad, but you're just looking at a future problem that's probably going to sue you and get angry with customers. And I don't have time for that. I'm not saying you don't hire somebody because of what they identify as. Hmm? Somebody comes in trans, fine. I'm right. sure they can do a great job. But if somebody comes in and looks like a bro and then doesn't identify and there's 30 other, like you're just a problem. Yeah. Why have it? Yeah, it was just a way that that could have just been handled where it's like, listen, I'm not, hey, I'm not a bro. I identify as this. Cool. Let's move on. Yeah. But then to go to the manager. To go to the manager and file a complaint. And file a complaint. A write up. Harassment. And then this. And then I guess this uh, boycott is, uh, has worked. But. At least, yeah, it actually, at least the boy, boycott has worked recently. It dropped, I believe, the stock is down uh, nineteen dollar nineteen nineteen point five seven points Makes sense this morning. Yeah, and that's not good. That's I know. Nineteen. That's like a full burrito bowl with guac. 
That is, and, that, and, and guac's extra. Guac is extra. They look at you like you can never afford it. And they look at you like you didn't know that. Yeah. Every time. time. Now when like you go that. there, you got to say, bro, Yeah, more guac. Bro, more guac. Yes. Thanks, bro. <laughs> I hate that when it's like, yeah, it's extra. I know. I know. Do you get yelled at a lot over this? I feel like you do. They just get, yeah, they, they look at you like, hey, that's extra. Like, you, I can't afford it. You know, <laughs> someone gets pissed, though. They're like, why is this uh, 43 cents extra? Mm -hmm. And it's like, why don't you just pay for your food and move? <laughs> I hate people who make scenes in fast food lines. Dude, Nobody should be more dead. It's fast food. <laughs> yeah. Like, even if it's screwed up and they hand it to you, just go. Just go. Just go and fix it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like, unless it's an allergy. Yeah. Just take the onions off. Yeah. You're 30. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. You're 30 at Arby's. Yeah. Just, yeah. Nobody's winning here. No. You're just holding up a line. And you, like, <laughs> you ever see somebody when you're at the drive-thru and they keep coming back with the order and it's the same bag? It's oh, like, what's man. happening? Yeah. What is happening in your bag? <laughs> Be gone. <laughs> like, I chose this. Yeah. You, <laughs> like, you know, it's one thing. It's like, well, these are as many as pies as I wanted. What'd you say? <laughs> These ain't as much, this ain't as much poison as I ordered. Yeah, I was going to get real sick. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's, it's shit. Bro, I said no sesame seeds. Yeah. yeah. It's like, but we got a sesame seed bun. It's in the song. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, sing it to me. And you're like, can you just go? Just go. Like, I've never heard the song. <laughs> I'm like, all right. It's like, oh, two off beef patties. Sugar <laughs> sauce. Oh, <laughs> man. Did we do, did the Trump shoes thing go today? Yeah, we have it. Oh, yeah? Because Trump yeah. came out with shoes, guys. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. I don't know if you guys know that. Because Trump. Kicks. Yeah. You, you're your shoes guy? Uh, I kind of. I'm more a shoes guy for on the court basketball shoes. I was going to say, those you... I might wear. <laughs> <laughs> What's your shoe brand? Nike. I'm a communist sellout when it comes to shoes. I also like it when young Asian toddlers make my <laughs> I don't care what brand it is. I got brand loyalty, man. When I was working at Kobe's camp, they gave us free shoes all the time, and they're so comfortable. And I apologize to the Eastern Hemisphere. but I'm wearing Jordans. There you go. I, I prefer no... young Asian toddlers to wear them to my house. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't... Uh, I, I mean, look, I'd like to buy American. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I don't care. Mm -hmm. You like what you like? No, I really do would like to buy American. Mm -hmm. I try to. But then sometimes I just see Jordans. I want to wear them. I, I'm, it's tough not to. Yeah. It's tough not to. It's not all Good of product. them. product. Some of them are terrible looking. Yeah. They look like ski boots. And you're like, why did you design them like this? Yeah. But the throwback ones, I don't know. I dig them. 90s era sneakers was the best era fantastic mm -hmm. i have reebok pumps mm -hmm. i have all the jordan i, I don't know did I, you ever wear and ones i did That's wear an american and ones. company is it yeah yeah i did i think into even at walmart they became one because i know they bought them at some point oh uh, man i don't know i remember when they first started it was just a couple of dudes it was like three dudes that just wanted to create a business where they could play basketball during lunch and then they made the street ball tapes right if you remember those yes um and one was my go-to for like outdoor uh, black top shoes. They weren't expensive. No, they were like sixty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. See. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you can get yourself some basketball shoes. I don't know about playing in Trump shoes though. That would be like. <sighs> You're gonna get hurt. You get hurt, or you start playing, and slowly people start like lining the court with rally flags and <laughs> MAGA hats and fucking flags with a snake on it. That, in the shape yeah. Of next the you know they're storming the court. Yeah. And then you hit a shot, and someone's like, "Yeah, don't." Tread on him! Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh shit, these shoes are. You have an FJB. Give me an on. audience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Trump he stopped at SneakerCon uh, at the Philadelphia Convention Center over the weekend to announce the new footwear, the Never Surrender High Tops, and their three hundred ninety nine dollar gold shoes that feature a block T on the sides and are wrapped with an American flag on the collar. Trump said he has been uh, thinking about putting out a line of Trump shoes for at least 12 years now. Uh, <laughs> Those are 12 years in the making. 12 years in the making. <laughs> Love that. For at least 12 years. I've been thinking about it. 
He is also selling another pair of Trump branded shoes uh, for $199 uh, and uh, Victory 47 cologne and perfume for $99 a bottle. Get out. Yeah. Victory 47. The internet had haters on the design and the price, but the gold uh, design Never Surrender High Tops quickly sold out. And uh, Biden actually uh, teamed up with the guys who created, uh, well, they were represented in the movie Air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Jordan shoe, and let's see what happened there. Mr. President, we got it right here for you. Air Bidens, everything you want. We got them made of gold. We got the B for Biden. We got, or big guy, whatever you want it to be. We got the, the ally flag. We got the Ukraine flag. They got a lot of ankle support for going upstairs. Or when you fall downstairs. That's right. Or they got it for when you ride bikes. Good support. Or when you fall off bikes. Correct. Or you can wear them in the shower. Or when you're falling in the shower. Correct. And you... they blink constantly. Yep. So if you get lost in the woods or just fall down somewhere, you hit that button, and that way Secret Service can find you or one of the elderly people that buy this. Well, I think it sounds like a whole bunch of crock pot when you got a corn pop and put them in. My daddy said, hey, Joy, listen here, Joy. I'm going to get you back on top of the muffin. And I think, thank you, Delaware. Yeah. That's a yes. That's a yes. I heard a yes. That's a yes. I heard a yes. Yeah. yes. Terrific. <laughs> How'd you get the real Biden? I, we just, just passing through. Yeah, wow. Just made some. He calls. stops off here at Blaze all the time. <laughs> yeah, he loves it here. <laughs> he loves it here. <laughs> Big fan. Yeah. He doesn't know nothing no more. Nope. He loves the snacks. <laughs> <laughs> just comes in. He's like, "Yes, snacks. <laughs> yeah, you got Doritos. Got uh, Doritos today. Come on. Come on, man. That's terrific. Come on. <laughs> Go ahead. Let me. America. You got any kids? Yeah, smell them. Yes. What? I love when he whispers. And I, I, I said, I'm the one that did it. I said, I told him I would be the one to get the vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he's not fit to stand trial, but he's fit to be president of the United States. <laughs> yeah. That is a, that's staggering. That's like not being oh, fit man. to eat cereal, but you can fly the new yeah. SpaceX mission. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unreal. Well, you were going to uh, well, say something in my ear. I was going to say come in my ear. Mm. Hello. Oh, we do? Yeah. Well, I'm going to do a quick announcement then. That was smooth. <laughs> was like, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what? Sarah? Unfiltered? Who? You mean Sarah, a regular on this very program? Yeah, friend of the show. Friend of the show, Sarah Gonzalez, is now hosting the Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered show. Everyone's favorite spicy Latina coming to you five nights a week with no holds barred take on news, politics, and culture. Mm. Mixing up a burrito bowl of her sass. She is also joined by regular guests and newsmakers to help make sense of all this madness. You can watch her on Blaze TV, the Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered YouTube channel, or listen to her wherever you get your podcasts. The show looks great. It's vintage Sarah. Mmm. I. <laughs> I Columba. Say adios to that new Sarah. This is vintage. I also <laughs> like watching it because you scroll too fast. Tune in and check it out. It's the Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered Show. You can enjoy every bit of it. She shows her feet. She shows her feet? Is that mm -hmm. true? Yeah, if you watch the intro, it's just several shots of... <laughs> Of her feet? So she's baiting perverts? So enjoy, if you like Sarah's Latin feet, tune in. <laughs> and if you're trying to get past the whole foot thing you got going on, think about fumes. <laughs> <laughs> we should have had you do that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a fair deal. Think about trying fume. Yeah. A little bit of Sarah, a little bit of fume. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have this liquor sponsor, which if you're Quentin Tarantino, you can pour liquor down Sarah's leg and drink it <laughs> off her <laughs> feet. <laughs> well, she has a boa constrictor around her because she's Latina. <laughs> That's from Dust Till Dawn. Yes, it is. Yeah. What a sexy movie. I'm a hike. Just the end. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Just like the ending? The, well, I mean, the kidnapping in the RV with the family isn't as sexy as the No, ending. it's not as sexy. It's Julia not, Lewis not is... not sexy. Yeah. 
It's just not as. It's sexy. not as sexy as Julia Lewis, or as Julia Lewis is still sexy in it. Yeah. Yeah. I know she's like eighteen, but she's older than me, and I can. That's okay. Juliet Lewis. Mm-hmm. Mm. Is it Julia Lewis? No, it's Juliet. It is Juliet? Mm-hmm. Who's not turned on by a kidnapping in an RV? Come on. Mm. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I Just like the movies the we watch with dad. Yeah. <laughs> in the back of an RV, I was kidnapped in <laughs> by a guy who made me call him dad. <laughs> I can still taste the glue from the duct tape. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, we do have to get out of here in a second. I want to thank you very much for coming on the show. Thanks you for having me. I, I hope you come you back. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate you. And again, where are you going to be this weekend? This week, I'm at Vulcan down on 6th Street in Austin, Texas. I got a Florida run coming up in March, uh, Gainesville, St. Augustine in Tampa, and then San Francisco and Sacramento in May. Fantastic. Yeah, brentpella.com. I appreciate you coming on. And you can also see him on Wild and Out and a bunch of other shows. So, you know, check him out. Check out his sites and tour dates. Yeah. And his special. And uh, Derek, you can see with me. Yes. And now we're going to bring you to... The end of the world. Last week we mentioned uh, race, Rachel Dolziel, I, I forget her name, the white woman who in, infamously identified as black was fired from her teaching job after the OnlyFans account was discovered that she runs. Well, we found it. What do you <laughs> think her OnlyFans username is? Derek. I'm going to go with uh, cookies and cream pie. Oh, I like, mm. I like that. Sounds, mm-hmm. sounds tasty. Mm. A bit of both. Mm-hmm. Mm. Angela. Biracial facial. Delicious. <laughs> mm. Brent. Um, I'm just going to make one up here. Uh, I I feel like it would be like burnt icing. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Icing. I think it, hmm. I think that is the right one. <laughs> we didn't say the real one. <laughs> and actually, you get to pick anything you want off the All in the Family set. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. That's your prize. Cool. Yeah, great. I think Angela, w- I saw Angela walking through earlier, and she sat down, and when she got up, she forgot that she had left her fume. <laughs> oh, on the chair. Don't tell them I sat on it. Oh, burnt icing. Yeah, a burnt icing. <laughs> it's perfect. That's a new flavor. <laughs> it's also like you know her general vibe. So yeah, it is. Yeah, it's she's she's trash. <laughs> also, I'm gonna go Rachel Wrong Hoseal. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Wrong Hole is all. <laughs> wrong Hole is all. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> I I prefer to pronounce it my way. I, I it's that my way you. or the highway. <laughs> That's why this show is called My Way or the Highway. Is this that show? It is that show. I forget. I for, I don't remember what show I'm on anymore. I hit my head. <laughs> Good night.